everyone. Welcome back to another travel vlog. Just as the title says, I've got the next three days traveling around Chiba Prefecture, which is, in my opinion, it's, it's kind of like a, a really overlooked prefecture because of its big, loud, popular neighbor, which is Tokyo. So yeah, just gonna be traveling around Chiba for a bit, seeing what there is to see. This isn't my itinerary, because this is sponsored by the Chiba Tourism, so this is the stuff that they recommended to me. So the first stop, like right now, I'm like kind of in the middle of Tokyo Bay, which is crazy. I'm at a place called Umi Hotaru parking area, so it's essentially like a, a rest stop, like a Michinoeki, but it's the exact point where the tunnel goes into the ocean. On one side of the structure you can see the highways coming in and then on the other side you look out and it, it just feels like I'm on a cruise ship but it's still technically land I guess. Incredibly beautiful clear day today. You can see Mount Fuji which is amazing. So yeah I'm looking forward to it. Three monkeys running through there. Oh. So I'm at uh, Nokogiriyama, which I've actually already been to before, on this channel even, but this is like a different trail that I went last time. I'm just learning now that the reason that this is cut in like such unique like square cuts out of the mountain is because back in the day this used to be, I don't know if the word like far farmed or mined, for the stone because the stone was apparently earthquake resistant and fire resistant and that kind of thing. So it was really valuable stone. So they would come here, yeah, carve these huge chunks out of the mountain basically, which is why this mountain you'll see in a bit, it's got a really unique structure. The word nokogiri means saw, but it was actually already called that before they started carving chunks out of it but now it looks even more like a saw which is crazy there's nobody else here it's a like dead quiet <laughs> this is so big holy crap <laughs> it makes you feel really tiny Like, so they were mining the stone out of this mountain. Apparently they would like load them up onto these big carts. And then it was mostly women actually back in the day that would carry these carts all the way down, like that whole hiking trail that we just went up. They would carry them all the way down and then carry the carts all the way back up again. And they'll do that like three times a day, which is wild. Cause it's pretty hard. <laughs> it's just so impressive. Like how big these walls are. Sorry, just quietly, this blows Mount Takao out of the water in terms of like good hiking close to Tokyo. Completely out of the water. So much better. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh my gosh, you're so beautiful. My leg. <laughs> I tried to do a smooth shot in my leg. 
My legs got the shakes. Oh. <laughs> calm down, calm down. <laughs> Absolutely huge Buddha statue. So apparently this is also the largest Buddha statue in Japan. Crazy. Oh, man, this little cafe is so freaking cute. Just around the corner from Nokogiri and like it's right on the water. It's got like some of the best lighting imaginable. She's been doing this for like 50 years or something. I don't know, it's got the kind of like, is this wabi-sabi? I feel like this is wabi-sabi. <laughs> I don't really know what that is, but it's got like full of like memories of photos and just like so much character, so much character and history in there. And the lady who runs it is so sweet as well. Definitely check out this spot. If you're coming to Nokogiri, it's so, so cute. Massive. <laughs> so the first stop for today is a spot called Tokyo One Kanon. Canon. Can Tokyo One Kanon. It's really hard to say actually. It's basically a statue of Goddess of Mercy, and I looked it up. It's 56 meters high, which is honestly surprising because I it looks a lot bigger than 56 meters. But yeah, they've got stairs inside that you can go all the way to the top at. So can I go do that now? It's really impressive. It's crazy. like on a poster at the very bottom that it's essentially 20 floors high and they've got the floors written here I'm only at floor 8 I feel like I've been walking for ages but anyway in the center of the building it's pretty impressive they've got these like there's like seven different gods on the way up I guess that you can pray to and they even have like the English writing saying like what they are a god of what their specialty skill is I guess <laughs> like this one Hotai god for profit and improving fortune I don't even, I don't think we're even like, I think maybe we're like two thirds of the way up or something, but the view is already like amazing. So cool. now in like northern part of Chiba in an area called Narita-san which you've probably heard of because of the name Narita. It's really close to the airport. I just had lunch at a really really nice vegetarian cafe that's just like one stop away from here which is cool and we're heading to a spot called Narita-san Omotesando which is kind of like a little shopping district but it's really it's really quite cool like a lot of the buildings are like the older style buildings. It's got kind of like a host town Nakasendo town kind of vibe and there's some beautiful temples at the end so I have to seen too much like coverage of this area before but it's actually very interesting considering how close it is to Tokyo and the airport that everybody's coming in and out of it's surprising that people don't talk about it more oh my gosh oh my gosh oh, so 
kid looks just like Mochi. I need to stop, I'm gonna cry. I didn't expect to get emotional in the souvenir store. <laughs> oh, look at my eyes, they're watering. I'm on the edge, guys, I'm on the edge. <laughs> So this is the first sembe on a stick I've ever seen before. Let's give it a go. I don't even know if it's gonna be crunchy. Oh, oh. It's way more wet than I thought it would be. <laughs> That's really good. It's like sweet, salty, a little bit spicy. I highly recommend that. That's amazing. 200 yen, how good. <laughs> oh my god. Come on, last step, the last one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I really thought it would stay on top. <laughs> Like, if you just keep going around the outside of the temple, there's like this beautiful little walk through nature, and there's like really not many people here you know, like one or two odd people like that. But it's really quiet and so peaceful right next to this like busy, bustling shopping town. I came here actually in summer last year, and it was beautiful, really green and like lush, very surprising. <sighs> There's like a little store that you go and buy the fish food from just over there. If I can open it. Ooh. Whoa! They are huge! Their mouths are so big! Oh, <laughs> denied. <laughs> oh, little cat, let me love you. Oh. My gosh, this is the coolest experience. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard of like strawberry picking or you know, Japan they've got like grape picking and all kinds of fruit picking, but have you ever heard of mushroom picking? <laughs> so this is basically like a farm experience that you can come to and you get 30 minutes in here for 660 yen and then you just get a little basket and you can cut as many mushrooms as you want and then it's 250 yen per 100 grams and then afterwards there's like a barbecue experience as well so you get to actually like chop it and cook it on the day so cool so cool so exciting <laughs> I'm 
たこういうふうに、ah. こういうの美味しいです。肉厚の。So there's like actually a number of different mushrooms here, and I guess it changes depending on the season. So this time there's like two different kinds of shiitake mushrooms, and then this, which is like a king oyster mushroom. They said there's not a whole lot of them at the moment, and most of them are quite small. And also, apparently, like a lot of the mushrooms sell out really early in the day. So a tip: if you're gonna come here, try and come earlier in the day. I'm having so much fun. I love mushrooms. It's my fault I can't see my ways. So then these ones are also shiitake, but they're like a slightly different variety. I think these are the more than ordinary shiitake, and the other ones were the more specialty variety. So cool. It's so t i n y It's next to my thumb. Oh. <laughs> あの、私の家は先祖代々農家なんです。で、私の家で作ってる農産物で、私が一番嫌いだったのはその原木栽培の椎茸だったんですね。本当にあの、その椎茸が本当に大嫌いで、外で働いてたんですけど、その時にちょ
this has been lovely actually <laughs> I've been very 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 surprised at the variety of the variety of things that I've seen and just how lovely they've all been. Yes, this is the end of my trip around Jibo. I think that this is like a very like, it's an overlooked area that's very close to Tokyo and it's all very accessible with public transport or without. Future Hana is gonna tell you a bit more about that in a second. Yeah, I've been very pleasantly surprised by all the places I've been to, especially like the mushroom farm today. I've never seen that anywhere. Like this monorail is super unique. Even this cafe is really cute. Like, I don't know. I don't hear much from Tokyo's neighbors. I think because Tokyo is just so loud and obvious that yeah, it's nice to see something a little bit different. But anyway, uh, enough rambling from me. Future Hannah is now gonna tell us how you can also get there and uh, yeah, any other helpful information you might need to know. Take it away, Future Hannah. Hello, Hannah from the future here with brown hair. So yeah, here's how you can visit all of the places that I went to using just public transport alone. They are real accessible, some of them are a little bit complicated, but I'm here to explain it all to you. So starting with number one, which is Umi Hotaru rest stop. This is accessible with a bus that leaves from Kisarazu station in the Chiba side and that goes through to Kawasaki station on the Tokyo side, or you could catch it vice versa. Uh, not every bus will stop at the rest stop, so make sure to check the check the timetable in the description down below. All of the, all of the links to everything is in the description below. Uh, there's a bus that leaves every Every hour and it will allow you about 14 minutes on the viewing platform but if you want to like stay for a bit longer you could catch the next bus so that would be like an hour and 14 minutes the next one is Mount Nokogiri to get here catch the train to Hamakanaya station and then from there it's a 20 minute walk to the trailhead for the Shikari Michi trailhead which is the one that I took this time it didn't take too long it was like maybe I want to say like an hour if you're just walking at regular pace but if you didn't want to do that you can just walk 10 minutes to the ropeway to get to the music and coffee shop which is that little cafe that was really really adorable I wish I had more footage of that actually but anyway that was only an 18 minute walk away from the ropeway so you might want to hike up catch the ropeway down walk to the coffee shop get a cute little coffee and uh, cake or something and then go back to the station the next one is Tokyo one Kanon, and that was that big white statue a little bit awkward to get to with public transport but technically possible with a 30 minute walk from Sanuki Machi station Narita San Omotesando and the temples nearby extremely accessible five minute walk from Narita station the Sakura mushroom farm is another one that's a little bit awkward to get to but trust me when I say that it's worth it. There's kind of like three ways to get there. The first one being catch a train to Monoi station and then catch a bus three minutes to Nishimikado station and then it's like a 20 minute walk to the farm or you can just walk 36 minutes from Monoi station or you can catch a taxi 10 minutes from Monoi station. So where there's a will there's a way it's worth it. A little bit awkward to get to but is technically possible and the final location being that treehouse cafe that I went to at the end it's called Tsubaki Mori Komuna and this is just a four minute walk from the Chiba Koen station which is accessible via the Chiba monorail and yeah that's all of the places that we went to I really hope you liked this video if you did please give a big thumbs up and subscribe again thank you so much for Chiba Tourism for sponsoring this trip I had a really really wonderful time I was pleasantly surprised by all the little things that we got to do I, I especially really liked like Nokogiri. I think if you're if you are in Tokyo and you want to do like a day hike somewhere, eh, everybody tends to go to Mount um, Takao and, and like Mitake because they're like technically still in Tokyo, and they're nice. Don't get me wrong, but they're very busy because it's in Tokyo. Really, not even that far away from Tokyo is Nokogiri, and I think it's just an amazing, an amazing hike. Like considering how close it is to Tokyo, so I can highly recommend that. It's got a lot of really interesting things there, um, and of course the mushroom farm, definitely my favorite. The monorail was sick honestly everything it was all really it was all a really good really great trip if you like this one you might enjoy my video where I went to the Oki Islands this one's way more off the beaten track definitely it's it's quite a bit away from the city but so amazing there was wild horses living on this uh, like beautiful green rolling hills and massive cliffs and all of that so yeah I hope you enjoyed that video and yep that's all thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time bye